After monkeypox was declared a public health emergency, the FDA has now approved a plan to stretch the nation's supply of vaccines. According to the CDC, more than 9,000 cases have been confirmed here in the U.S., but vaccines are hard to come by, and health experts have warned that demand is outpacing supply. The new plan will allow providers to use one-fifth of a usual dose. For more and an ability to understand how that's possible, I want to bring in Dr. William Schaffner. He is a professor of infectious diseases at the Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Always good to have you with us, Dr. Schaffner. So just off the top, is one-fifth of a dose enough? Well, it will be enough, Lana, if it's given the way the FDA recommends. You see, it won't be given with a needle through the skin. It will be given with a very tiny needle into the skin, into the little skin itself. The way we used to do a skin test for tuberculosis, a little bubble will be raised on the forearm of our of our uh, arms, and uh, that's where the vaccine will be inoculated. That little bit in the skin will stimulate the same kind of immunity that a larger amount given through the skin. It's fascinating that that can work just by changing it in that way. Uh, earlier, my colleagues Elaine Keanu and Tanya Rivero spoke with a monkeypox survivor who described his ordeal seeking treatment, and I want to play some of that. What's really um, disturbing and, and scary that the medical community was more informed on what was happening. Um, of those like nine days where I was waiting for the actual results, uh, doctors were misdiagnosing me left and right with different things, um, staph infection, MRSA, and they were, you know, they were treating me for those things. And in one case, I had an allergic reaction to one of the medications and it just made things worse. Um, I just felt really alone. People didn't have the right information and no one knew really what to do. And Dr. Schaffner, given what you just heard, how concerned are you about these gaps in information within the medical community regarding monkeypox as well as the delay in testing? Well, of course I'm concerned about that. Your state health departments all across the country have been flooding doctors with information about monkeypox. It's on all kinds of continuing education websites also with pictures of the typical uh, rash, rash lesions that occur and information about which patients ought to receive what sorts of treatment. Uh, we have to get out to as many doctors as possible. And fortunately, diagnostic testing is now much more widely available than it was just a couple of weeks ago. And what should someone do if they suspect that they have mm -hmm. monkeypox, particularly in terms of, uh, in that case, somebody who's waiting on test results, should people be isolating? Should they be keeping to themselves? Of course, they should be isolating to the effect that they don't have intimate contact with others, particularly sexually in intimate contact, because that's how the virus is spread. So we would have to ask people who have these monkeypox rashes to stay away from others and so that we don't transmit the infection to yet the next generation of individuals. So let's shift gears because you and I have been speaking for more than two years about the coronavirus pandemic and guidelines have changed several times with new variants and new information. In some ways, when we're talking about monkeypox, it feels reminiscent. What is the latest guidance? What should someone do now if they test positive for COVID-19? For COVID-19, particularly if you're older, if you have an underlying illness, if you're immune compromised, your doctor can give you a medication. It's the same one that the president took, Paxlovid. It helps prevent the evolution of your infection into something more serious. And this has helped keep many people out of the hospital and made their infections relatively milder. But with uh, the, in the president's case, there was a rebound. Uh, he had rebound COVID. He then started testing positive again. When that happens, do people need to isolate again? Are they should they be concerned about being contagious? Yes, a small percentage of people have that Paxlovid rebound. You know, the, the medicine suppresses the virus, but after five days, that's how long you take the medicine, sometimes the virus is still present and wakes up again a little bit and causes symptoms. Fortunately, they're mild, but the, pa the patient could still be contagious to others. So as with the president, 
they have to isolate again for another five days. All right. Really quickly, the CDC is expected to relax some COVID guidelines for the classrooms. What should parents and students expect in this new school year that's just around the corner? The most important thing I can say is the vaccine is available for every school child in this country. Parents, please talk to your pediatricians, your family doctors, and I hope that you will vaccinate your children. All right. Dr. William Schaffner, thank you so much for joining and thank you for all that you do. Thank you.